Hi everyone, my name is Nathan Thompson. I'm a writer and a journalist. I am speaking to you from lovely Phnom Penh in Cambodia, uh, where it's, um, the temperature's lovely and uh, the people are lovely. It's a lovely place to live, but it wasn't always good for me. I was addicted to heroin for a number of years and before that, a number of other drugs. And um, I'm here to talk to you about how someone can get addicted to heroin because you know, it's an interesting question because by now you would think people would have realized before they take heroin that it's a bad idea. You know, it's not, it's not known as a great life choice. So, but yet still many people do and um, there, it seems to be a fairly baffling situation. So hopefully um, I'm gonna tell you how it was for me and maybe shed some light on what is a difficult area. So you know uh, the heroin addiction in it for me it didn't start from I'm not taking drugs to wham I'm a junkie you know there's like a long sort of building up process to the moment when you take heroin now for different people it's different but this is what it was like for me well, I started taking drugs when I was about 13 smoking uh, marijuana and um, sort of moved on to ecstasy and uh, magic mushrooms and the kind of sort of party drugs and the thing about it for me was in those days drugs gave me an identity because as a teenager it's sometimes hard to fit in and for me the drugs allowed me to have a kind of place in the teenage society by smoking weed and selling weed I was kind of the cool guy that could uh, get invited to parties and people were like well you know he's kind of like a rebel interesting kind of guy and so this identity was quite useful for me. So when I was a teenager, smoking a lot of weed and taking certain amounts of drugs was a useful way of coping with the normal stresses of adolescence. Um, but the thing is, this is quite common for a lot of people and, and a lot of people grow out of it, but not for me. For me, it just was the start of like an incremental process where just more and more drugs got added to the mix. And um, the first signs of addiction, like properly bad addiction was, well, I mean, not counting the time when I was 16, I was smoking, you know, an ounce of very high, high quality strong weed a week. Um, you know, how I managed to cope with that, who knows? But that wasn't even the worst. The worst was when I was about 17-ish. And this is when the first elements of addiction, real addiction started coming in because at that point I was using, I was using other drugs to cope with the bad effect of taking the original drugs. So for instance, the amount of weed I was smoking was making me quite tired and spaced out and zoned out. So rather than stop taking weed, I thought the excellent solution to this would be to start taking speed. So when I was tired from the amount of weed I, took, I was smoking, I would go, oh, okay, we'll take some speed and then we'll like rev the mind up again. And this is a terrible idea because weed and speed together tends to make people psychotic, which is what happened to me. And um, you know, I went pretty crazy. Um, I was a dreadful nightmare for my parents to deal with and um, I was failing at school and, and my friends who had joined in with me at this point, most of them stopped using drugs at this point because this was the first sort of um, hit of major consequences for drug use. But for me, I just stopped for a few months long enough to get my head straight and then I just started right up again, mostly when I went back to uni. Uh, when I went to uni, which was about a year later, I was... Um, you know, that's university. Um, I was part of a society where it was very cool to take drugs again, and I just started right up with the drugs. And it just kind of progressed from there because at university, you have a lot of financial aid available to you as a student. Um, and I just took massive advantages of all the kind of loans and, and you know, grants that were available. And, and uh, slowly the addiction developed into a cocaine addiction. And so what, what had happened was we had started with weed and then just by the time I was a student I was taking a significant amount of cocaine and the thing about coke is it's more addictive than drugs such as marijuana and ecstasy. It's, it just hooks you that much more and it's kind of a psychological addiction, not a physical one, it's a psychological addiction where the brain sort of, you start, and you start thinking that, that 
you can't go and party or socialize without it. It becomes just a very essential crutch, rather like cigarettes. Unfortunately, it's infinitely more expensive than cigarettes. So the main issue, the, the main consequences of that coke habit was just severe debt and just no money and selling items that I owned to buy more drugs because I just, by that point, the, the solution to my problems was always to take drugs. And the drugs started causing more problems, which then required me to take more drugs as a solution. So when your main solution for all problems in life is cocaine and alcohol, it's a pretty stressful existence and it's a very expensive existence. Even after I left uni, university, I um, got like a fairly decent job with a fairly decent salary, which just allowed me to take more drugs and cocaine and, and um, I was barely able to cope at work and um, soon that job didn't last very long. I sort of was quit half forced out after a year. I probably would have been fired uh, if I hadn't quit myself. Um, and at that point in my life, I was pretty lost and I, I just had trouble coping with life in general. I just really struggled to, you know, deal with negative emotions. Um, I just didn't want to deal with reality and it's, it's hard to put that in words. I think it's because if you start taking drugs at the age of 13, most of the normal learning of how to cope doesn't happen because you're always high. So when you get to the age of 24, you end up being quite immature, comparatively quite immature which just kind of adds more stress and more problems to your life, which requires more drugs to cope. So it's just this very fast moving Catherine wheel of a vicious circle. And, um, you know, the, when I heroin finally came along, the opportunity to take heroin, it was very kind of casual. Like a friend of mine had tried it a couple of times. We were bored on a Sunday afternoon and it was like, oh, well, you know, I know someone that's got some heroin. Do you want to try it? And by that point, I tried almost every other single drug known to man. And except heroin and I and in my mind the literal thoughts going through my head was well I've managed okay taking all these other drugs even though I hadn't but in my mind I was still okay like you know I had a I, I was still earning money and I had a I had a flat and a house I hadn't hit rock bottom by any means so I thought oh well you know well maybe heroin won't be such a bad idea so I took the heroin and I remember thinking, wow, this is some real value for money because it really hits the spot. It makes me feel so much better about myself and my life and it costs just a fraction of the amount of the cocaine at the time. Because when you first start taking it, you've got very low tolerance. And the effect of the heroin lasted a good 12 hours. Whereas, you know, a, a hit of cocaine, well, you're lucky if it lasts an hour. So I thought, wow, okay, this is, this is gonna be my new solution. And heroin's quite insidious because it, it, it's not a sort of big flash of blinding light. It's not a very dramatic experience. It's, it just feels kind of nice. And that's the weird thing about it because, you know, I'm doing a video of heroin, you're watching a video about heroin, and heroin, because heroin has just got this big kind of scare factor around it, and people think it's a very dramatic thing. But the interesting thing about it is it just feels vaguely nice. You just feel good in a very sort of nice, non-drunk, just I can function kind of way. And you just think, oh, what's, what's all the fuss is about? And then you come down, you don't want to take it again. You just think, oh, well, this is obviously, I've been very misinformed about this drug. This is obviously a, a wonderful drug and I can clearly control it. And the thing is, it, you do control it. Like I say, it's not a dramatic high. You can control it. I did for, you know, maybe two years. I was taking it on and off maybe once a month or, you know, uh, once every few weeks. And then I'd stop and it would be fine. And um, I, at that point, I was also, I'd take coke when I could afford it. And um, yeah, I mean, it was, I was still struggling with life. But the thing is, is that when you're going through life, just using heroin casually, if your emotional level stays stable, then that's fine. But in life, something will come along that will hit you, will knock you for six. And suddenly that extra emotional uh, turmoil will make you turn to heroin a little bit more. Now, for me, that was about um, a time when, um, uh, you know, someone I loved, uh, with the breakdown of a relationship that meant a lot to me. It was also involved uh, the loss of a family home, which sort of happened at the same time, also at the same sort of time that um, I was falling out with my friends because of um, the, the, the increasing use of heroin. They, they didn't want to be a part of that. So I find myself very isolated, very alone, and very unable to cope. 
And at that point, I just started turning to heroin that little bit more and that little bit more. And then I woke up one day and thought, shit, I can't stop. And I, uh, you know, I just can't stop. So, and the weird thing was at that point, my mind was so compromised by the continued presence of the drug. I didn't even care. I just thought, you know what? I don't even care anymore. And, and at that point, I just was like a full-fledged junkie. I, everything I cared about was about the drug. I just, just woke up in the morning, needed the drug. Go to bed, needed the drug. Need the drug to eat, need the drug to work. You know, it was so stressful because, you know, I remember I had to get to work, but I couldn't get to work without scoring first. And I'd be running to get the dealer and the dealer would be late. And then I'd be late for work and I'd be calling my boss and then I'd be in the toilet trying to get the drug in my system. Very stressful existence. Um, but at the same time, it was almost weirdly enjoyable because in the addicted mind, you will kind of have to justify this abhorrent behavior to yourself. And the way you do it is you, for me, I was buying into the heroin mythos of, of being the kind of outsider, rebel type of archetype. I believed I was the rock star, the rebel, the guy who was living on the edge. You know, I was, you know, I was the guy, I was out there taking the heroin and, and I know I'm not alone in that. I've spoken to other recovering you know, junkies who, for who it was a similar experience. They felt sorry for the people going to work. They saw normal people as squares. For them, the junkies were the real heroes. And that's where, and that's, and that's where you know you're in trouble because the denial and the delusion requires a serious intervention. Um, and serious rehab and serious professional help, which I will be talking about in the next video. So for me, the process of getting addicted to heroin was a long one. It happened over about 10 years. When it came time to take the heroin, it was hardly a big jump for me. I mean, I was already smoking crack at that point, so it wasn't really that big a, um, that big a jump for me to start taking heroin. And um, I was, like I say, at first it was very easy. It, it appeared to be easy to control, but, and it was easy to control until it wasn't easy to control. And I'm sorry if that sounds um, obtruse, but you know, it's, 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 it's very um, insidious, you know, in that sense. And when I did finally wake up and realize I was a junkie, it was already too late. And, um, then the denial and the delusion kicked in and I, at that point, was kind of, you could say, almost mad because I was so far gone from reality, from the continual presence of the drug in my system, um, I wasn't even able to be reasoned with, I wasn't able to think clearly and at that point, you might say I was a flat out junkie. But, like I say, recovery is possible, I'll be talking a little bit about that in the next video. Um, I've been clean for over two years now, I live in beautiful Phnom Penh. And you know, life is, life is good again. So um, yeah, that's the video about how it's possible to, for people to get addicted to heroin.